The Duchess of Sussex may face claims she invaded her own privacy of her newspaper fight ends in court. Meghan is suing the Mail on Sunday for publishing a highly personal letter she wrote to her estranged father. But it is suggested she put it in the public domain herself by telling friends about it and giving them the nod to go public. The pals then briefed journalists at celebrity magazine People, with one of them going into details about the letter. And, if the Duchess is called as a witness in court, she may have to swear on oath she did not give her friends permission to discuss the letter. Meghan, 38, and husband Harry, 35, launched their legal fight on Tuesday with a wild rant against press intrusion. Claims will be fought. Her lawyers filed papers claiming publishing the letter to her father, Thomas, 75, was a breach of copyright, infringed her privacy and was a breach of the Data Protection Act. But the Mail on Sunday is fighting the case, which some royal watchers have criticized as ill-judged and ill-timed. In court, privacy arguments could center on the people's story in February when five pals were cleared to give Meghan sight of her fallout with Thomas. One refers to the letter, saying she asked him to stop victimizing her through the media. The case could mean Thomas, who has not met son-in-law Archie, is called to give evidence. Royal author Patrick Jeffson said, This kind of litigation is easy to start but nobody can predict the path it will take or the damage it will cause. Royal commentator Richard Fitzwilliams added, One of the problems with the case is that it will bring back the issues between Meghan and her father. Harry Quiz Fury Harry is filmed scolding a TV reporter for asking a question hours before he released his rant. He talked to health officials and children suffering from malaria and AIDS before being ushered to a waiting vehicle by palace officials. But Harry appeared annoyed when he was asked an unscheduled question about the visit as he was whisked away. Sky News reporter Rhiannon Mills asked, that short conversation, what do you hope to achieve through it? Harry let out a laugh before responding, what? Ask them and pointing back towards the hospital. The reporter followed up. Is that why it's important for you to come and talk to them? Harry gestured for the journalist to move away from him, saying, Rhiannon, don't behave like this. Public opinion has never really been on Meghan's side. But her estrangement from her father has been the source of substantial, and unfair, judgment. When Prince Harry released a statement Tuesday announcing that he and his wife, Meghan, were suing the Mail on Sunday over the publication of a private letter the Duchess of Sussex had sent to her estranged father, the British press was divided. While some journalistic quarters have accused the prince of being sanctimonious and playing the victim card, others have defended the right of the Sussexes to protect their privacy. But whatever you think of the lawsuit, it's clear that public opinion has never really been on Meghan's side. Indeed, ever since Harry and Meghan announced their engagement in November 2017, the American actress-turned-duchess has faced a constant barrage of criticism in the British press and from much of the British public. There have been stories about feuds with Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, reports of diva-like behavior in the run-up to her wedding, accusations of hypocrisy and profligacy. But it is the estrangement from her father, Thomas Markle, which has attracted much press attention, and which has been the cause of substantial criticism toward her. Culturally in the United Kingdom, the family is family refrain still has incredible potency. No matter how toxic the relationship, or how damaged the parent, plenty of people still believe that you should stick by your relatives whatever the cost to your personal well-being. In a 2015 survey out of the University of Cambridge, 68% of UK respondents said there was social stigma around family estrangement, and that they had felt judged for contradicting societal expectations after cutting off contact with a family member. Meghan's acrimonious relationship with her dad, as well as with other members of her wider family, is a public rift many British people find distasteful, as the commentary in many newspaper articles attests, not to mention social media. It is an affront to so-called traditional family values, and neglects the biblical commandment to honor thy father and thy mother. Indeed, in today's Daily Mail, Piers Morgan accuses Meghan and Harry of being heartless in the way they've banished Thomas Markle from their lives. 
whatever the private context for the rift between Meghan and her father, and none of us know what that context is, it is invariably Meghan who bears the brunt of the blame. This specific criticism hits a very personal nerve with me. When I became estranged from my father 25 years ago, I was the recipient of similar judgmental attitudes. You only have one father, people used to tell me, as though perhaps I might have forgotten. It was, in fact, a truth of which I was painfully aware, I only had one father, and mine, an aggressive alcoholic, hadn't lived up to the task. As anyone who has ever become estranged from a family member knows, and there are, statistically, plenty of us out there, the decision is never taken lightly. To become estranged from a family member is like a slow, gradual death. It rarely happens overnight. It's very rarely the result of a single incident. More often, it's a build-up over time, often years, of toxic behavior, until self-preservation demands you distance yourself from it. For years, I thought I was unusual in having such a significant estrangement in my life. But when I started writing and researching a novel about family estrangement, in which a mother is desperate to reunite her two adult daughters after three decades of a seemingly inexplicable rift, I learned I wasn't alone. Research from a UK charity suggested that 19% of British adults are in families containing one or more estrangements. Across the pond, one US study found that 40% of participants had experienced family estrangement, while another discovered that 10% of American mothers are currently estranged from at least one adult child. And when my novel, If Only I Could Tell You, published in the UK earlier this year, I received hundreds of messages from readers telling me they'd always felt ashamed and isolated by their own broken families. For most of us, these painful estrangements at least have the benefit of taking place in private. Not so for Megan. For the past two years, she's had her family conflicts displayed across the front pages of newspapers, discussed on TV shows and debated in magazines, all by people who don't actually know anything about her situation. For anyone who's encountered dysfunctional family dynamics, to have remained silent as Megan has, to have resisted the temptation to tell her side of the story while others are selling theirs, displays incredible self-restraint and remarkable dignity. There are, of course, other insidious forces at play regarding the criticism Megan has faced. There's an undertone of racism to some of the reporting, fueled by right-wing pockets of UK society that resent a mixed-race woman marrying into the royal family. Xenophobia has played a part too, the British do not, after all, have a great track record when it comes to welcoming Americans into our royalty. And there's undoubtedly a strong element of misogyny as well, the fact that Meghan has strong opinions, and is not afraid to express them is unpalatable for some sections of the British establishment. You only have to look at the treatment of many female members of parliament, ranging from gross condescension to threats of violence, to know that in some areas of British life, strong, opinionated women are still deemed unacceptable. But it is her ongoing familial struggles which have proved clickbait for so many readers, and which of course is now the subject of such a high-profile legal battle. Over the years, I've learned to be robust in the face of others' criticisms about my own estrangement, but I haven't had to watch it dissected by the world's media. Whether or not Meghan Markle wins her legal battle, and the right to protect her privacy around such difficult relationships, remains to be seen. But perhaps, in the meantime, the rest of us could offer a little less judgment and a lot more compassion.